Viewers, days after Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra opted to use words like panoti or bad omen to blame the Prime Minister's presence at the Cricket World Cup Finals for India's loss, Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has followed suit. The TMC Supremo has laid the blame on BJP sinners or papis and their presence at the Narendra Modi Stadium for India's loss. Not only this, she has also suggested that the saffron jerseys worn by the team ensured that they would be marked out for loss. Viewers, listen in to these pronouncements. India final jodi Kolkata hoto, bawangkar the hoto, amra jittam, amade chale meera yato bhalo khela dula hai. Shab geruwa puri di chhe. Even khelte hi ho bolche chilo, nil pora jabe na. Player the apotti the shita khate ni, tau dekbe niler modde ek tu haulud lagi di chhe, geruwa lagi di chhe. पापिस थोड़ा जेखा नहीं जावे। अच्छा वाला हमारे लड़के वहाँ पे वर्ल्ड कप जीत जाते, वो वहाँ पे पनोती हरवा दिया। सुनाइए भाई, देश आप लोगों को देख रहा है। आप लोग बहुत अच्छी मेहनत की है। चलिए होता है। the BJP naturally slammed the abuse-laced approach of the Congress and TMC, but the most articulate response came from Muhammad Shami, the de facto cricketer of the tournament for India. Listen in to Muhammad Shami. Look, it's very important because at that time, we had a match. And when the Prime Minister comes there and gives you a response, then there's a different confidence that the country's responsibility has come with you, and the country's responsibility has come with you. You have seen how they have increased everyone's ability, how they have been able to talk to everyone. This was very good for us. Look, my goal is to be better for the country. Shami summed it up, viewers. He said that the Prime Minister came to basically share his sympathies and condole with us. And Shami is right. The PM's entry into the dressing room was to offer much needed solace to a group of shattered heroes who frankly were done in by fate and not the lack of application or talent. India was far and above the best team in the World Cup going in, viewers with a perfect record, blemishless record. To be dismissive of the Prime Minister's sensitiveness or to brand him a panoti or a bad omen for attending the game reeks of bad taste. Period. Worse, it legitimizes superstition, unreason and casuistry of fact fudging. In fact, the record tells us that Modi isn't the first Prime Minister and hopefully wouldn't be the last Indian Prime Minister to attend a significant tournament or lend a shoulder to athletes in need of a pick-me-up. Leadership is, after all, the art of sharing in the highs and lows of the public. Here's when Congress Prime Ministers attended such significant sporting occasions. And that too, viewers, let me tell you, in a losing cause, would the Congress and the TMC refer to these leaders these former Prime Ministers as Panotis or Papis. Think about it. Here are some hard facts which help you put into perspective what I'm saying. So fine, you have a problem with the Prime Minister going to Narendra Modi Stadium, cheering for the Indian team and then commiserating with them in the dressing room when they end up on the losing side. Then by that yardstick, you should have a problem with Indira Gandhi who entered the stadium during the hockey finals in 1982 Asian Games years, and we all remember that hockey final. Some of us who were around remember how we were thrashed 7-1. And that happened in New Delhi. Indira Gandhi entered the stadium in an open jeep to greet the crowd. Those are the pictures. In fact, there are videos also available. At 4-1, Indira Gandhi sent her aide, R.K. Dhawan, to call upon Rajiv Gandhi to change the goalkeeper. Now you remember viewers, Negi was the goalkeeper. I still remember that. India lost 
Indira Gandhi left after Pakistan's fifth goal. She left the stadium. Viewers, a few years later, almost two decades later, 2005 ODI series India versus Pakistan in New Delhi. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh attended the final match with Musharraf, President Musharraf. Pakistan won by 159 runs, winning the series 4-2. Now, viewers, were all these individuals Panautis? Were they all, viewers, Papis, because of which the Indian team lost? One in a significant hockey final and the other, of course, in an anticipated series against Pakistan, our arch nemesis. Now that the opposition which prides itself in championing Mohabbat Ki Rajneeti is stooping so low to troll the gutter for hateful barbs to throw makes one ask, is the Mohabbat Ki Rajneeti slogan an essentially empty one? That's the big question that we're going to ask. We're also going to ask viewers, the opposition, why it feels necessary, it feels desperate enough today to go after the Prime Minister personally Ignoring other aspects. That question is being asked. This debate is brought to you by Motorola. Hello, and that's the Moto. question on your screens, viewers. Let's go to our esteemed panel and ask some basic questions of our panelists tonight. Some who will speak in defense of the Prime Minister or, let me put it this way, against this callow low-brow superstition encouraging politics that takes us back. And since it comes from the Congress, one has to wonder what's happened to the Congress. And let me bring in Smita Prakash here. She's a political commentator with vast experience. Smita Prakash, you know the Congress that started out taking India out on its journey as an independent nation, underlined progressiveness, scientific temper. Nehru was an advocate of that, set up some of our finest institutions of research, etc. He wanted to build the Congress in a progressive, cosmopolitan, forward-looking, and thereby the nation in a cosmopolitan, forward-looking dimension. And here, look at where we are going. Smita Prakash, what's happening here to the Congress? I think what has happened, uh, the fault lines uh, are running very deep uh, in politics. And as we get closer to the 2024 elections, uh, I feel that every political uh, throwing uh, is to the ring, and there's a it's a very high stakes game now. Uh, it's it's literally become like a. Big Okay, we're having a few problems with that connection with Smita Prakash. It's dropping out. But let me pass that on to Savio Rodriguez. We're going to fix that and get Smita Prakash back. I think she was setting up this debate. Savio Rodriguez, what do you make of this? You know, cricket is a sport. Sometimes your team will win. Sometimes your team will lose. Opposition politicians must refrain from playing petty politics because the real reason is that India is above all. So, no games, just sports should actually be the mantra for all politicians as far as India is concerned. Now, why is it, why do I say that, you know, Rahul? I say that primarily because the team whether it's a cricket team, whether it's a hockey team, whether it's a football team, represents India. And India is not about Congress or BJP or an Aam Aadmi Party or in this case TMC. It is about India. And there are lo lots of hopes and aspirations that the people of India put in their team when they are playing, especially on a stage like World Cup. Therefore, we should really be thinking about sports and not games. There's a I'm huge difference between sports and games. There's a huge difference. 
It is indeed. And how, and how tragic it is that that difference is today being deliberately, deliberately blurred, that line, viewers. And let me, let me bring in Dr. Sumansi Raman on this. Dr. Raman, why is a exceptional, and you might have even read editorials now in the newspapers, why is an exceptional gesture of sentimentalism, of support being reduced to a political stunt by the opposition? Have they nothing more to talk about in this election campaign? I don't think that Rahul, this is a political stunt by the opposition. First of all, uh, I don't know if it is, uh, you know, it, it was necessary to go with the video camera and uh, into the uh, dressing room. Easily a photograph could have been taken and released, which would have conveyed that the uh, Prime Minister expressed his uh, support to the team and so on. Now, if you are looking at, you know, uh, uh, people hurling, uh, you know, abusive uh, uh, speeches or uh, uh, epithets at you, uh, you will remember last week, uh, the Prime Minister called Rahul Gandhi Murko Ka Ke Sardar. So basically, um, you know, if you are calling Rahul Gandhi um, a leader of fools, I think that you will necessarily, if you dish it out, you will have to take it back. So I think that uh, that is exactly what is happening now. And this, um, you know, five years ago or ten years ago, uh, such statements could be used for political uh, purposes, you know, when opposition say, oh my God, they are abusing the Prime Minister. This is, But I think that that script has worn, worn through now, especially because the Prime Minister has no problem in saying things about the other political parties, especially the opposition leaders. So when, once that happens, people now say, okay, he is giving it to them, and they are giving it back. So that's it. I mean, I don't see... Um, no, no, no. Dr. Raman, it, there uh, is a difference here. I think Savio Rodriguez was no, talking Jersey about cow. drawing a difference. Now, hang Sonia on. Gandhi there is a, a political cow. context. One second, sir. I am not what here. What is the political context? In one second, one second. Dr. Cow. Raman, Dr. Raman, invective flows both ways. Let's exactly. be honest about that. Okay. Exactly Let's be, no, no, just one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. There is invective linked to politics and there is invective, sir, that shouldn't be linked to politics. So let's make that Jersey, distinction. Now, I want to ask you, what in? is wrong? Where does Jersey cow fit in? Oh, it talks about, I, I presume, I presume, and I don't know this. I don't huh. know this. The BJP can explain it. But I presume it came from this long tutelage, apprenticeship that Rahul Gandhi undertook and continues to undertake. Perhaps that. I don't want to go down that route with you. No, because no, there is no end to this. Because then the someone will turn cow. around and say, what does Gandhi Nali ka kira? Where does that come from? Huh. Or Nietzsche, where does that come from? Or Chaiwala's, you know, beta, where does that come from? So, or hybrid but, calf. But, but one second, I want to ask you, I want to ask you. Well, remember, the first person who talked about Sonia Gandhi's foreign origins, my dear, and broke the party was Sharad Pawar, who is today sitting in the India Alliance it's as them. its main convener. So, please, there was a context there. I'm not, I'm not in any way rationalizing the context. Excuse me. No, no, one second. Sumansi, Sumansi Raman, let's not be too clever by half here. Please, no, half I'm the sorry. epithets I'm that are used against the Gandhis have been used by opposition leaders when they were militating against sure. the Congress. So let's not... Sure. But there was There's a political no context. I, what is the context here and what, what is, is the, the kind of... Context? Let me ask you, sir. Let me ask you. To use a word like Panauti, hmm. do you think in a modern nation, that is Who aspiring towards, excuse me, let me just finish. That is aspiring yeah. towards, now you can, sir, you can today cherry pick, you can today, no, no. Who used the you word can Panauti? today, Rahul Gandhi used the word Panauti. No, no, it was on social media oh, for four so, days. So are you Anything saying, media, by the same yardstick, okay, so, so hang on, hang on, this is very it. interesting. Now look viewers, we are mainstreaming gutter conversations on social media and bringing it into the political mainstream. And who is doing it? Who is doing who is it? Papu? Who is Papu? Why is he a Papu? So has the Prime what Minister the called him Papu? Is it I think the only person who has called Rahul Gandhi and... No, can hang on. I give you one second, yeah. one second. But one who second. called the hybrid no, no. Who staff? called, who called a Rahul a Gandhi staff? a buffoon? Was an no, opposition no. leader. Tell me. The tell Chief me Minister of is, Telangana. What is Political the Prime Minister has never called, one second, the Prime Minister has never called Rahul Gandhi a Pappu. 
Let But me tell you. But he has used the term hybrid car. Now tell me what is a hybrid car? I am telling you what is the, the context. Okay, okay. okay. Now, now, you don't be, don't be, now you understand that. Don't be, don't be now. Don't be naive. Don't, don't be naive. You don't know the political. You know, I don't. If you don't know it, sir, then go and read your political know. history. Tell me, tell understand, what understand what signaling people. is in politics. Tell but you certainly don't. Hybrid. Okay, one second, one second. Look, I am not here defending. As I am trying to tell you. invective has I, been my used my point is very simple rahul both sides have been using okay so everything language. is fair in love and war both that's what that's fault. what you're saying both okay let both me bring in fault. let me bring in sushil pandit and kamru choudhury also sushil pandit what do you make of this what do you make of this unalloyed unabashed attack from a party that supposedly calls itself a party that has opened a mohabbat ki dukan <laughs> and i will quote out of i will quote out of an express edit after i finish but you go ahead first sushil pandit thank you rahul for having me on the show and good evening to you and your viewers the co panelists uh it is nothing but visceral hatred for the prime minister prime minister's persona and through him to the very office the high public office uh in our contemporary times it's a no holds barred attack at the institution and the person who occupies the institution because today they don't make any distinction he indeed said pm as in panauti modi and prime minister you know so all distinction all thin lines were blurred and this was nothing but visceral it was vicious never has anyone sunk so low in uh, the political discourse that i have been witness to in several years <clears throat> of course there have been horrible horrendous lows in the past as well but coming from the the foremost leader of opposition for the person leading the country is abysmal is unprecedented and justifying it rationalizing it goes even beyond that you know in the heat of electioneering campaigning among the people you know you could use different pretexts ways for explaining it but to rationalize it to legitimize it to say it was proper it was asked for it he had it coming is you know going even beyond because no, that is know, legitimizing that is you are absolutely uh, right mr it's pandit going beyond. that is legitimizing it's abuse that is what suman si raman is doing yes. what about yes. me and let me tell you let me Not tell you let me tell you instead of counseling the congress party like the indian mm -hmm. express has done now indian express is tagline is the journalism of courage i think if dr raman actually had the conviction of courage he would have spoken up and said very poor taste but perhaps what comes around goes around but very poor taste but he very hasn't had taste, but he hasn't that. had but he hasn't even I had the decency that. to come out and said I that said rahul gandhi is used of the word now now you are saying it now you are saying it because i, I am now hang on hang on okay okay deep post facto rationalization ab shuru ho gaya okay now let me one second one second right 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 yeah yeah sure you say to me you say to me that rahul gandhi has has completely done an injustice including the tmc chief minister mamta banerjee i'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. there I'm it comes sorry. there it comes both, he will not accept sides, he will not accept now one second one second one second one second wrong. but Here we is. we should take an elevated position According as commentators we should say it doesn't matter if one side starts it someone has to end it that is leadership that is statesmanship viewers that that, that, that means that you rise above no, excuse me that means you rise above excuse me you rise above temptation that is leadership that is maturity and that is class that is being classy you don't come around and say usne bola to main bhi bolunga is this a race to the gutter viewers to the bottom it's not is it No one should be encouraging that. Kamru Zaman Chaudhary, let me ask you a very simple question tonight. Fine, the Prime Minister for you is a bad omen. 
But Indira Gandhi went to watch a final match. She in fact walks out of it at 4-1, calling upon her son to fix the game, to go out there and have the goalkeeper removed. This is all on record, sir. Never denied. Then Manmohan goes in the great halo of cricket diplomacy, graces a match with a dictator who you should perhaps not have even been speaking with. But nonetheless, chalo, wo bhi maaf kar diya. We sat with a man who was staging coups and bleeding India through a thousand cuts, sponsoring jihad, Gazwa Hind. And that too, in a losing cause. Would you call them Panautis? Kamru Chaudhary by the same yardstick. Yeah, Rahul, if you are discussing about civility in public discourse, let me ask you one very simple question. As sitting Chief Minister of BJP Rule State, Hemanta Bishya Sharma invokes late Indira Gandhi in the same same tone that the uh, a majority of the Indians are calling the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, though there are, there is no direct link with him as a panoti, you know there is there are certain names that have become uh, what you call this synonymous with particular leaders out here in India, like a chaiwala. If we call a chaiwala in a modern days, we go to Narendra Modi directly. Nobody goes to the street side chaiwala vendor out here. Now, let me remind you about actor Kajol or the unacademies, uh, what you call this, Karan Sangwan, when they said that please elect educated members from, for the legislature or for the parliament. Then suddenly you have got the entire ecosystem up in arm against actor Kajol or uh, Karan Sangwan sitting there abusing Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Are you, what kind of morons these people are? Nobody has abused the Prime Minister. And when you talk of superstitions, Rahul, pouring milk on photographs of cricketers, what type of superstitions are these? Can't you, don't you have a distinct, uh, this thing between our gods and the cricketers? It's incredible. It's this incredible. This is the type of level of gutter level political discourse that we have come down to in India right now. When you call Murkhonka Sardar, that means we are bloody fools in India supporting Rahul Gandhi. Yes. That comes from the mouth of the same Prime Minister. Yeah, Rahul, when you sit in a glass house, it's better not to throw stones at others. You throw one stone, this is new India, mind you. We'll throw ten stones at you and you better bear it. Because we are not going to sit lying down. Now it's good that the Panothi name has been endorsed by the election commission, by the Bharatiya Janta Party, by media houses like you and great anchors like you, Rahul. So let it stick. Because no name was sticking with Narendra Modi. Now the Parothi name is sticking with him, so be it. How can it, we help it? Because Rahul Gandhi never mentioned or never linked Rahul Gandhi, uh, Narendra Modi to Parothi. It was only these people from the Bharatiya Janata Party and it, it's, its ecosystem that have linked it. So I don't think so that uh, there is anything wrong in it. But anyhow, the main Nothing crux wrong. of the debate that should have been there, Nothing. we need to have a political discourse in a civil manner, in a manner in which Atal Vihari Bajpai hmm. or let's say other Prime Ministers have led this country. You just cannot go to a particular state and go on continuously abusing Congress and the opposition leaders. This is not the way that India's okay. civility should be, dis should let be me, going on. Let me bring we are a democracy, a functional who want democracy to okay. and the largest democracy in the world. Okay. Our so, leaders so should be expected today, to be maintain a little bit of civility. Civility. Okay. Now, now viewers, look at this. This is a complete rationalization. And Rahul, Rahul Brazen 10 more rationalization. seconds, please, if you permit me. No, take One 20. small point. Small point, I've just... Sir, this platform you know, Rahul, is open to abusing the Prime Minister. You that? abuse him. 20 seconds. Take one more minute. No, no, no. Elevate the level of this debate to the no, gutter. No, I am not abusing. Because right now we are even the below point gutter. Is that you cited some instances of Indira Gandhi. You cited some instances of Which you didn't respond of to, of course. Thing. Why is this not? Why, why? Why is it not coming? Simple reason: Indians are fed up of the overdose of megalomania. Okay. You see, when Chandrayaan was about to land on the surface of the moon, you had Prime Minister face coming in front of our TV screens. People are fed up of that. Let us accept Viewers, that India is a, not a monarchy. Let me, let me come in here. On the issue of megalomania, Kamru Chaudhary, the Congress should not preach, for God's sakes. Please. 
don't do that please have you even seen have you even seen the psychophancy that is mainstreamed in the congress party there was an individual who called for free and fair elections in the congress party by the name of shashi tharoor he contested and he said it was not even a fair contest because in the name of the great leaders so the gandhis who have a perpetual claim to rule they put a dummy candidate he said it i am not saying it the g23 not g20 but the g23 the superannuated body of the congress party you want to read their charter viewers and there is a gentleman who appears quite often alongside kamru zaman choudhury called sanjay jha who is still suspended because he called for a very small thing elections in the congress hmm. party savio rodriguez would you like to respond to our friend kamru choudhury well i always believe that suman and uh, kamru are entitled to their opinions but let me tell you where i have a problem with you may dislike narendra modi you may want to call him names but where rahul gandhi went wrong was when he called pm modi panoti modi now pm is not an individual it is a representative of this country that is where i have a problem with you can continue to abuse narendra modi bjp leaders will continue to have a word or two against the congress but why do you insult the pm position is my problem because rahul gandhi categorically stated pm means panoti modi right that's what he said so today i want to ask mr choudhury out here somebody in the congress would aspire to become a prime minister at some point of time when people have confidence in them right now they don't would that person also be a panoti at that time because that person would be a pm so that's the real problem why are people having a problem they are having a problem because you have soiled the the position of the prime minister now take us for example if we were in a sporting team which we were in our college days rahul if we ever lost a game we would look up to the principal of that college or the or a senior teacher who would comfort us so i don't see anything wrong with what the prime minister has done Therefore, now let me tell you this conversation savio about megalomania do you know viewers how many institutions in this country are named after the nehru gandhi family should i read them out jawahar lal nehru institute of post graduate medical education and research pondicherry jawahar bal bhavan thrissur kerala jawahar bharti college kavali andhra pradesh jawahar lal nehru center for advanced scientific research bangalore or bengaluru karnataka jawahar lal nehru engineering college orangabad maharashtra jawahar lal nehru government engineering college sundarnagar himachal pradesh jawahar lal nehru krishi vishwavidyalaya jabalpur madhya pradesh jawahar lal nehru medical college ajmer jawahar lal nehru medical college aligarh jawahar lal nehru medical college belgaum jawahar lal nehru medical college bhagalpur jawahar lal nehru national college of engineering shimoga karnataka jawahar lal nehru rajkiya mahavidyalaya port blair Jawahar Lal Nehru Technological University Anantpur Andhra Pradesh Jawahar Lal Nehru Technological University Hyderabad Telangana Jawahar Lal Nehru Architecture and Fine Arts Hyderabad Telangana Jawahar Lal Nehru Technological University Kakinada Andhra Pradesh Jawahar Lal Nehru University New Delhi <laughs> Nehru Art Science and Commerce College Hubli Karnataka Nehru Memorial College Puttanampatti Tiruchirappalli Tamil Nadu Nehru Memorial College Sulia Karnataka even I am tiring Pandit Jawahar Lal Nehru Memorial Medical College Raipur Chhattisgarh Pandit Jawahar Lal Nehru Institute of Business Management Ujjain Madhya Pradesh Sri Nehru Mahavidyalaya College of Arts and Science Coimbatore Tamil Nadu Nehru Park Dirwana Rajasthan Jawahar Science College and this is only viewers institutions Rahul, you made a major goof one second these are educational institutions now let me let me go through can the I, jawahar navodya vidyalayas viewers it just goes on and on and on these are government institutions okay viewers listen to this these are the jawahar navodya vidyalayas and look at how long this list is and one nehru and one modi stadium is named after modi and the world goes absolutely bizarrely bonkers not that i'm in favor mm-hmm. of any names being ascribed to living people 
on monuments, etc. I'm not in favor of all of that. But imagine, viewers, I can't, I've not even got to the list of museums or ports or parks and gardens or schemes or sports. Viewers, Therefore. and they are talking about Sushil Pandit, about <laughs> demagoguery and about, you know, the overbearing megalomania. I've only come to Jawaharlal Nehru. I've not even begun with Indira Gandhi or Rajiv Incredible. Gandhi or Sanjay Gandhi. And we must remind them, Rahul, these two prime ministers, great prime ministers India had, Nehru and Indira, they gave to themselves Bharat Ratna while they were prime ministers. It is incredible the level to which this scratching your own back and giving yourself tributes. I mean, there is, this, is, this is the epitome. And the party that does it accuses others of megalomania. <laughs> I mean, it beats all reason. And then you were saying that, you know, I, I heard Kamaru say that this has become, this has stuck. You know, uh, Panoti has stuck. He was gloating over the fact that these people have accepted it. You know, when you threw a slur like Maut Ka Saudagar, you saw the outrage as something which has stuck. And it gave you a route in Gujarat. You thought chor, Chokidar Chor hai has stuck. And it gave you a route in 2019. You refused to learn. And now you feel Panauti has stuck. Yes, it has stuck in the minds as an outrage unacceptable. And it will give you a route in just few months down the line. Every time you open your mouth and you think that this has stuck as a, as a description, you will see the consequences very soon. It, these are hard-earned wages. Yes, L let me ask. And you refuse to learn. Let me ask. Forget about it being an ethical blunder because we've normalized it, as you've heard our panelists, especially Kamru uh, Chaudhary. But let me ask Suman C. Raman, who's at least more acutely aware of how politics plays out. Dr. Raman, is this also a tactical blunder? Forget about the ethical blunder. Is it a tactical blunder? Twice, Maut Ka Sodagar, and most importantly, very importantly, viewers, Chokidar Chor Hai, were used. And the Congress party was delighted at the fact that every media house was talking about it. What happened? Hmm. Uh, Rahul, Rahul, I think, I think um, you will see a little bit of a precursor as to what impact this has on December 3rd. Okay. But um, I also believe that uh, times were quite different in uh, 2014. Of course, it was totally different. In 2019, uh, you know, there were other uh, re reasons as well. It certainly was not the Chaukidar Chor here, which uh, <laughs> was the only reason for the re-election. Then why was there? Why no? Then Suman C. Raman, was, then Dr. No, Raman, no, why did the Congress focus the, the nation's yeah. attention it, it on Chaukidar Chor here for months altogether with that all their own ecosystem it's talking about Rafael, Rafael, Rafael? We went bonkers. One, one, one second, one second, Rahul. Much water has flown under the bridge from 2019. <laughs> We are now, and don't right. don't take my word for it. Just see what happens on third December. Okay. After okay. that, we will talk. Okay. So okay. I think that this is a this is not a issue as far as the voter is concerned. I think that they are more worried about bread and butter issues. Okay. 2014. Okay. There was Anti Voters are worried more about bread different. and butter issues. They don't really care about the direction in which our polity is headed. It can go into the gutter for all they care. That's really what we are being told, viewers. And whoever pushes it further into the gutter will come back in a much more, in a much more robust fashion. Because that is what our voters like. They like to wallow in the gutter with their politicians. Can you believe it, viewers? Look at the contempt for you out there. Forget about anyone else. Can you believe it? This is what our panelists say that you want. Is this what you want? Is this how you want the transaction of politics to continue in this country? Think about it, viewers. Because I'm going to move on to another election, another country that is raising eyebrows, political temperatures, and causing a complete meltdown in the left.